Map can be used to specify multiple VMs using the same profile. Uh, in a profile, you can create one profile per VMs, but that's not the suggested way uh, because a, a lot of the VMs are gonna share some information, uh, things like passwords, or, or uh, let's say you have a m2.large profile that you create, you always want them to have the same uh, number of CPUs and memory. So you can create that as a profile, and then in your map, you can use that profile and then specify uh, information that's only specific to the VM. Um, I'll go over that uh, in the example so it'll be more clear. Do we have any questions right now? Okay. So the next thing is uh, we're going to jump into the live demo. We're going to learn how to set up, configure, uh, manage the environment, and deploy VMs using Salt Cloud. All of the presentation content uh, is at that URL. So if any one of you is like following uh, whatever I'm doing, I've also uh, put a tutorial file there. So whatever steps I'm gonna do, you can follow uh, if you miss any step. So the first thing we wanna do is install Salt Cloud. Uh, I've got a Oracle mm -hmm. Linux server here. And um, I just deployed it today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and Install Salt Cloud on it. All right. Once Salt Cloud is installed, we need to install the PyVomi uh, library so that uh, Salt Cloud can talk to the VMware API using the library. Once we've done that, uh, we have to configure the cloud provider configuration. Again, cloud provider is the, uh, contains the information that can be used to authenticate with your uh, VMware environment. So here, there's an example. You specify the vCenter ID. The driver is VMware. Specify a user. You can specify a password. Uh, the URL for the vCenter server. Optionally, you can specify a protocol and a port. And there's better documentation if you just search for Salt Cloud VMware and go to the first link or the second link. So it talks about how to install it and, and what, what more options you can configure. So basically, after you configure your provider configuration in your profile, you can specify anything like number of CPUs, memory you want, um, specify the CD DVD drive, specify if you want an ISO to be mapped to that. You can specify what disks, uh, if you want to resize those, those disks or add, add them to a specific SCSI controller. In the network section, you can specify network adapters. Uh, if the network is a DHCP enabled, then you don't have to specify a static IP. So that's an example uh, where the network is a DHCP network. If it's a static network, then you can specify IP gateway and subnet mask. You can specify SCSI controllers uh, that you want to create. Specify a domain. Specify the DNS servers, which get set using VMware tools uh, on your servers. And there's a, a ton of uh, other things that you can do. So on the GitHub repository, I've created a sample script to set up the VMware um, cloud driver specific information. So you can just curl that um, file and then set your passwords and, and credentials there. And I already have the file here, so I'm just going to go ahead and run it. As a part of the process, it also restarts the sort master. So you should see all trues, and then in the end, it tries to establish a connection, uh, says the connection is successful. 
So going back to the tutorial. Setting this, after you set this up, you can use most of the functionality uh, that gets shipped with the driver. If you go to the second link, it talks about how you can, how you can add hosts, uh, remove uh, hosts, uh, query for data centers and other information. So let's just go ahead and play around with the ESX host that we have. So in my VMware environment, I have uh, four ESX hosts right, that are right now in maintenance mode. I'm going to go ahead and exit them. So the command to do that is salt cloud dash f dash f is uh, to run a function across your vCenter environment. Uh, and then the name of the function is exit maintenance mode. You specify the vCenter. In my case, it's vCenter 03 because that's what I set it as. And then you specify the host that you want to exit. So let's pick ESX072. And right now it's waiting for exit maintenance mode task to finish. If we go back here, we'll refresh. The task is already started and it's in progress. All right, it's completed. So now you see the host is outside maintenance mode. Uh, we can enter it back using the similar command, but replacing the function with enter maintenance mode. So let's go ahead and do that. Right, it entered the maintenance mode. We can disconnect the host using disconnect underscore host command. And then we see the host is disconnected now. We can reconnect it by using the connect underscore host. All right, the host is reconnected now. You can similarly remove the ESXi host. Uh, I'm not gonna go over that last command. Creating a data center, uh, whatever you can do from the vCenter UI, you can do from the uh, command line client, or at least most of it. Things like creating a data center, creating a cluster, and then creating a data store cluster, adding ESXi hosts to the clusters, and then adding hosts as standalone, standalone hosts in the data center. Instead of going over each of these commands, what I did is I created a bash script, which is again, uh, if you go to the samples folder, there's a VMware build environment, build environment. Um, you specify the vCenter name that you want to use, specify a name for the data center, specify the cluster name that you want created, specify the ESX source that you want added to the uh, cluster and that you want added as standalone hosts. And then it just loops across those hosts and uh, runs the salt cloud commands. So I'm, uh, instead of running over each command, I'm just gonna run this bash script and show you how it uh, creates a new data center and adds these four hosts to it. So before I do that, I'm just gonna delete this cluster
and then I'm going to run the build environment script it created the data center it created the cluster inside the data center it's waiting to add the host systems so if we go back and refresh we should see a new data center here and then we see a cluster we're going to start seeing hosts here so it added two hosts to a cluster and now it's going to try to add two hosts as standalone hosts in the data center So this one is a standalone host and these two are um, in a cluster. So they're going to uh, use things like SDRS, uh, storage vMotion and uh, HA and all those capabilities that VMware provides out of the box. Any questions until now? Okay. So I'm going to delete this data center. Now that we did most of the stuff, the next part of the presentation is we're going to create virtual machines. So before you create a virtual machine, you need to uh, create a profile. Profile contains all of the information that I explained earlier, things like CPUs, memory, um, what, what customization you want in it. I already have a profile, so I'm just going to show you what it looks like. The profile is going to be specific to your environment. So in this case, uh, that's the name of the profile. I created uh, three of them, one for Oracle Linux 6.7, one for OpenSUSE 42.1, and one for Ubuntu 14.04. And the first one I just specified, use this vCenter uh, clone from this template. Uh, Create the VM in that data center, in that folder, in that cluster, use that data store cluster, and use, add a network adapter um, with that network name. It's a distributed switch type. Uh, make the servers have these DNS servers. That's the initial password to use to install salt on the templates, which of course gets changed once the high state is done on them. Uh, and then point them back to this salt master. The open source one just extends from the initial one. So it, it basically gets everything that's specified in the first profile, and then you can specify what you want to get, like override, or, or what you want extra. So in this case, um, I want to specify a different template. And just to show, like, disable customization, I don't want any customization, so I set that to false. In case of Ubuntu, it's going to do the customization since I, by default it's true. Uh, and you get the idea. You can like create for Windows and create for Oracle Linux 7 and things like that. So now we're going to look at a map that uses these profiles. So in a map, you specify the name of the profile that you want to use for those VMs. You sp specify the VM name as a list, and then you specify wh whatever you want to, uh, wh want that VM to have 
specifically. Things like you can specify number of CPUs and, and memory and disks and all of that. Uh, you can specify any of that here. In this case, just to give you an idea, I'm, sp I'm specifying a different minion ID for each one of them. By default, the minion ID is, is the name of the VM, but I want it to be different. I want it to be the fully qualified domain name. So I'm explicitly setting them here. So create three servers, three OpenSUSE servers, create two Ubuntu servers, and create create two Oracle Linux servers and create two Ubuntu servers. So now I'm going to deploy these VMs in parallel. So you're going to see seven VMs created. The command for that is salt dash cloud dash capital P means run it in parallel dash M means use this map file to generate the deploy the servers. And I'm going to run it in debug mode so you can see what's, what's happening. So the good thing about using uh, maps is it, it queries your environment and it checks if those VMs already exist. Um, and in this case, none of the VMs exist, so it's gonna tell you that, hey, these VMs don't exist, do you want me to create it? If, if, if there were VMs that existed, it's going to say, these exist and these don't. Do you want me to create these that don't exist? Same process goes, goes on when you try to destroy the servers. It's, it's going to say, hey, these VMs exist. Do you really want to destroy them? So I'm going to press yes. And then we're going to see it's going to query the environment, set, set all of the information it needs to set. So right now it's sending the events. Oh, we see some forms here. Go back. So right now it's complaining because it's uh, we created a second data center and they both share the same data stores. So I'm going to try and remove the hosts. Right now I'm going to run that same sort out command. This query to proceed yes or no, this is part of the script you wrote yourself? No, this is built into Salt Cloud. This is, this is built into Salt Cloud, the query process. So even if you're using OpenStack provider or, or DigitalOcean or AWS, it's always going to check uh, the name of the VMs that you specified in your map or your in your maps. Uh, it doesn't do it with the profiles. So if you create a VM using a profile uh, instead of using a map, it's just going to try to create it. It doesn't actually query them first. So now we can see it's waiting to apply the storage DRS task. If we look at the tasks here, we see all of them running in parallel. And one of them already completed. So
So it takes about 20 to 30, 15 to 20 seconds uh, on an average if you've got a really nice data store. What it's trying to do is uh, it tries to copy the VMDK files from your template or the VM that you're trying to clone onto a different ESX host. So uh, if you've got a 10 gig link between your ESX host, then it's going to take quicker. If you really have a slow data store and uh, like a one gig connection or slower than that, uh, then it may take like a minute or more. So the next thing it tries to do is wait for the VMware tools to be running on those VMs. All the VMs now should be powered on. Yep, they are. And if we go on one of the VMs and look at the summary page, right now it doesn't show us any DNS names or any IP address. Uh, that is because VMware Tools is not running right now. And after the VM boots up, it takes a while for the VMware Tools to come up. So right now it's just waiting for that step. And I did miss one step, which was there in the tutorial. Which was to update the bootstrap script. And uh, the reason for that is uh, the version of uh, the bootstrap script that gets shipped, that got shipped with the version of salt that's installed is, uh, has some bugs, which has been fixed on the latest develop. So that command updates your bootstrap script. So we may see installation of salt fail on the Ubuntu servers, but we're going to fix that. So now if I read in that command to create the servers, it says all of them are already running. I can destroy these servers by specifying a dash D. and then recreate them uh, since we updated the bootstrap script. So the, uh, the complete creation of the VM, uh, after the VM gets created in, in VMware, uh, it waits for VMware tools to run. After VMware tools start running, it waits for the IP to appear up. It waits for the VM to get the IP and then uh, after your VM gets IP, it uh, tries to install salt in it, uh, and you can make it do a high state when it comes comes up. Uh, so with one process, you can uh, you can deploy a cluster. So let's say you want an OpenStack cluster. Uh, the talk I did uh, last year in Tokyo uh, for OpenStack Summit was used this. Uh, to deploy OpenStack on top of a VMware environment. And I basically had a map file with uh, three compute nodes, one controller, and one network node. Uh, and I deployed them all at once in VMware environment. Uh, just ran one command and it did everything else. Uh, it deployed the states that needed to be run on the compute nodes, uh, distributed the pillars, it did all of that. So you can use this process um, on in, to deploy VMs in VMware or OpenStack or whatever environment you have. While this is going on, um, I can answer questions uh, if, if there are any questions. Okay, no questions, that's good. You can, you can use the same process to deploy a Windows server. Uh, How often do you apply them yourself? 
Oh, myself? Yes, or in Crimson or your, your, your university? Uh, we, so we do right now have a different process to deploy Windows servers, uh, but we're trying to use uh, the Salt Cloud driver uh, so that process to deploy servers is the same. So it's not different for Linux and Windows. Uh, there are some challenges uh, we ran into when using Salt uh, with Windows to manage them, uh, which is the reason that there is like a bunch of PowerShell scripts that we have that we use um, to deploy and manage them. The question was about the percentage, how much is Windows, how much is Unix or Windows? Or so about 60% or 70% is Linux. Uh, 30 to 40 percent is uh, Windows. All of the Linux deployments that we do use Salt Cloud now. Uh, earlier they used uh, PowerShell scripts uh, that were run on Windows to query the uh, VMware API. So that's why we created uh, the driver. So from a Linux you could like control your vCenter and run commands and manage them. So as you can see right now, it's trying to run bootstrap script on all of those servers. Uh, it's trying to install salt. Once this process finishes, uh, I'll query all the VMs and any more questions? I didn't ask uh, about how many of you have bare metal servers. I, I did ask about VMware and OpenStack. Do any one of you have bare metal servers? Okay. Is anybody using uh, Docker? So once the servers come, come up, they, they send an event back to the salt master saying, hey, I've deployed and I've created. What do you want me to do next? You can set up a reactor to watch for that event and do something else, like uh, post a message to your Slack channel or update your CMDB saying this VM was created or decommissioned. Uh, you can also... Um, in your in the configuration file for the uh, for the VMs, the profile or the map, you can specify startup states and either specify a specific state you want to run or you can specify high state. What that does is the moment it sends an event back that the VM is created, it does a high state on that server. So if you have like a uh, in our in, in Clemson's case, we have a specific build process and a specific states that need to be run. Uh, our, our image is pretty pretty basic. It's like a golden image. It doesn't have anything in it. Uh, the minimal image uh, that we, minimal footprint that it has, that, that it can have, uh, and we try to do everything using salt on top of it. So it makes management pretty easy. Adding users, um, installing packages, setting mess message of the days, uh, Installing spacewalk or some sort of software management, repository management software. All right, so the process finished. Now I'm going to run a salt star test.ping. And we see all of them responded back. I'm going to do a grains.get OS full name. And there we go. We've got seven servers all different environments. Uh, right now they're running high states on each one of them. So I told them to install Apache. Uh, and of course, the, it's called HTTPD on one and Apache on another. So the states that are written are written in a way so they can be run across multiple environments. Uh, we use Jinja to, to figure out uh, what state to run on what servers. 
if you've got a mixed environment and you use one shot master to manage all of them, then like that's the better way that you use. You, de you design your states in a way so they can be run across multiple uh, distributions. Any questions? So you are using the bootstrap script, right? Yes. Why don't you just package the salt uh, minion into, into your base images? Uh, the idea was to have the most minimal image. So we don't install any package at all. Like the image that we have is literally the ISO that gets shipped from vendors, uh, the minimal. And we, we don't even install wget or vim on them. Uh, we just let salt do all of that. Inst uh, Pre-installing salt RPMs on the VMs. For some users, that might make sense. Like, some people uh, who want to speed up the process, they can pre-install uh, things on their servers. But again, it's a hassle when you have to like update your template every time and um, upgrade salt if there's a new salt version, uh, things like that. But you could do that. Like you could uh, have RPMs pre-installed. Uh, of course, you still will have to need, you will need to reconfigure your VMs because each VM is going to have its own uh, key. And it might have a different master, it will point to a different minion configuration, things like that. Did yeah, that? Um, open sec, for example, if you do that through cloud in it um, and, and keep it all completely out of the end. Say again? You could use cloud in it, for example, in open stack to just do the configuration changes. Just to yes, you could. Any any other questions? Okay, so I guess I'm just gonna uh, finish early. Uh, went too quick. I can still answer questions uh, or if there are any suggestions. That would, what what we can do more with the driver? If there are any features you'd like to see, talk about short cloud in general. Okay, thank you guys. Well, as I don't understand much, what is the driver you mentioned? I don't get what you say when you say the driver. What do you mean with the driver? So, Salt Cloud has different drivers, and drivers are basically used to connect to different APIs. So, VMware has a different API. So, you would need a VMware driver to talk to the VMware uh, API. There's an OpenStack. Um, there's an EC2 driver for AWS to talk to Amazon. Um, Google Compute Engine has its own driver. Azure has its own driver. So it's just, uh, that, that's what I mean by driver. Okay, thank you guys.